What an amazing hunt. What an amazing bird. When you look at this bad boy. Beautiful bird. He's been back in here a few years. He's got these hooks on him, which is great for public land. I mean, to get a hook bird on public land, he's got, um, they're probably an inch and a half. I don't know. I don't want to go higher than that, but they're nice hooks. Really nice. He's got a beautiful, huge beard on him. That's going to go 11 inches, and it's thick. I'll post the stats up here on the video as soon as we get, uh, get him back and get put him on a tape measure. But, uh, now this is where scouting and doing your preseason homework really comes into play and gives you the advantage on these birds. Uh, we've been having a tough time out in Tennessee. I've been having a tough time. I don't know my way around there real yet. I've been on a few birds, haven't been able to close the deal. So uh, we decided we roll up the road here to Maryland since we still had our licenses from last deer season. Still had a few turkey tags on them. We hopped in the truck, got up here to hunt with Michael. and. Uh, he was hunting with a friend this morning, so I told Dana we'd go back up here to where we <laughs> know there were a few birds last spring. We got in here, and it was silence. Did not hear a gobble as it started to get light, and I went ahead and sat until uh, <clears throat> about 6.30, quarter of 7. It had been full daylight for an hour or so, uh, and I texted Dana. She said she's on a field edge back here, she said you want to go ahead and sit and wait. Uh, we know birds frequent that field, and that's a good strategy when I'm being quiet. But uh, I got up <coughs> and told her I was going to cruise around, go check uh, a few other areas that I know hold birds. As I started walking, I caught a real faint gobble off in the distance. Believe it or not, he wasn't but about 300 yards off, but this stuff is so thick. You, you can't hear the birds through it once they get on the ground. So I made my way in that general direction and I started hearing a couple other gobbles a little more clearly. Uh, the problem being is it's so thick back in there, you can't go through there. I knew exactly where he was. He was in an uh, open area where he likes to roost behind this field and he flies down and he struts and it's surrounded by impenetrable walls of briar. But I know this area well enough, I've scouted it enough and hunted back in here enough that I knew there was a deer trail that went right down through that thick stuff. It's the only way to get through it. So I snuck down that deer trail and got in the vernal behind the one I could hear this guy in. I was probably only 50, 60 yards away from him at that point. He couldn't see me, I couldn't see him. I knew he was there, I'd heard him over there. Of course, I was kind of afraid I bumped him because the first time I called, I didn't get a response, but the next time I called, he gave me a good response, and I knew I was in good shape because I had set up just off the row of briars where he was, there's a deer trail that comes through to the vernal I was in. So I gave him one more series, he appeared, fanned his tail up, boom, stuck his neck up to look to see if the hen seen him, and that was the end of his story.
Bird led me on a little chase. He's a nice long beard. Maryland bird down. Hope you join us on a few of our other outdoor adventures. We're www.camochairproductions.com, sharing the outdoors on YouTube. We hope we see you again real soon.